If you're not self-hosting at Aden, you're missing out. Think Zapier without limits or monthly fees. I'll show you the smart approach. Proxmox Docker for quick local testing, then hosting a VPS for production that never sleeps. You'll leave with both setups working perfectly. I don't want to waste your time. Let's get into it. Let's talk about the self-hosting NADN dilemma. I'm running dozens of powerful NADN automations locally on a Docker container inside of Proxmox. YouTube to Obsidian, YouTube to WordPress, Reddit analysis scraping, automations for my daily work. I can't rely on these during a power or internet outage. My solution is a perfect hybrid setup. Proxmox Docker NADN for building and testing locally hosting a virtual private server for production that actually stays online. Same workflows, bulletproof reliability. Let me show you how fast this really is. We'll start with setting up NADN inside of Docker. If you don't have Docker, I've got a free Proxmox Linux container script in the description. This works perfectly for testing and hobbyists, but here's where most people mess it up. So I'll show you a couple ways to set this up inside of Proxmox. The first way is by using a Proxmox VE helper script. So you just copy the script here, which is a bash command and head up to Proxmox shell and go ahead and paste that bash command in, enter. And what that's gonna do is it's going to create a Linux container with NADN inside of it. I'm not gonna run through this method because I'm going to set mine up inside of this Ubuntu server Docker container. If I have a look at my dashboard here, I have a tile for my Docker lab and that signs me into Portainer. I like to use Docker Portainer because it gives you a nice graphical user interface for all your Docker containers. So we're gonna come up to Stacks and we're gonna create a new stack for NADN. So we'll select Add Stack. Then I'm gonna type in NADN. Inside the video description, you'll find a link for the stack file. So go ahead and copy and paste that into the editor. I'll just run through it quickly. So this one is pulling the latest image of NADN. We'll set the restart condition to unless stock. It's gonna run on the default port 5678. Now you will need a domain name in order to connect webhooks or Gmail or other APIs. So I'm going to use my Obsidian AI tools URL here. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a subdomain and then I'm going to link that to a Cloudflare tunnel in order to connect to my NADN home lab. So for now, I'm gonna set it to be nadn.obsidianaitools.com and you could set this up for whatever domain name you would like or you could just run it locally if you just wanted to have a play around without any integrations. So we've got our port and the protocol that we're using is HTTPS. Put our public and our webhook URLs. Because we're using a Cloudflare tunnel, I'll select the proxy to true. And then I've got some database configurations, performance and runners, some security. So I'm gonna encrypt everything with this encryption key here. So you need to write this down somewhere safe if you're going to use this environment variable. And then we've got our node environment, which is production and our time zone, our logging. If we wanted to have an email configuration, we could set it up here. Then we've got our volumes, networks, health checks and resource limits. So if you want some more memory, you could increase it here. And then down the bottom, you could run an optional backup service. I'm gonna leave that off for now. Then we've got volumes and networks. We'll just scroll down and we're going to deploy the stack. So what that's gonna go do is it's gonna go pull the NADN image down from docker.io. And we can see it's got deployment in progress. So while that's deploying, I'm going to jump into Cloudflare. I'm gonna go into my Zero Trust dashboard. I'm gonna create a tunnel so that I can connect to NADN. So I'll come down to networks and select tunnels. Then I'm gonna select Cloudflare. It's gonna ask me to name the tunnel. So I'll give it the name NADN Obsidian AI Tools, just so I know what it is, and I'll save the tunnel. So we'll go up and choose Docker, and then we're going to copy this command here to a clipboard. So go ahead and copy and paste that into your clipboard. We only really wanna extract the token here. 
and just be mindful that anyone with access to this token will be able to run the tunnel. So we'll jump back into Portana. We're going to create another stack. So we'll select add stack, going to call it Cloudflare Tunnel. And then inside the video description, copy the stack file into the web editor. Then you need to grab your token and replace the token that's listed here. So once you've replaced that token with your unique token, scroll down, select deploy the stack, head over to containers, and you should see the Cloudflare tunnel container running. You should also see the NADN container running that we set up previously. So now head back into Cloudflare. We can see that we've got a status of connected. So we'll go to the next page. Now we need to set up our subdomain. So I've chosen NADN. Obsidian AI tools, and then I need to specify where NADN is installed. So this will be your host for the NADN container. So for me, this is 10.1.1.156. So I'm gonna paste that in and take out the HTTP. Then at the end, I need to put the port number for NADN. So this is going to be 5678, and I'll choose HTTP as the type. Then I'm going to select complete setup and we can see that I have successfully saved settings for the tunnel. So now if I come over to the right, I can select configure and I need to select publish application routes. And you can see I've got it here. So if I ever need to make changes, I can go make changes here. So let's grab this URL here and paste it in our browser. Success. So we can see that we can now access our NADN running locally through our Cloudflare tunnel at nadn.obsidianaitools.com and this will be unique to your setup. I'm going to go set up my account. So we'll go add our email, first name, last name and set a password and then click next. It's gonna ask us a few onboarding questions. You can skip by saying get started and then it's gonna tell us we can get some paid features for free forever. So we definitely want to get a free activation key because this is going to give us workflow history, advanced debugging, execution search and tagging and folders to organize our workflows. So you go ahead and click send me a free license key and then that will send it to your email that you put in the setup. And then you'll notice down the bottom here, head over to usage and plan to activate the license. So we'll go and do that. So I'll go check my email grab my license key and then select enter activation key. And I'll go ahead and paste that and then select activate. And now I have successfully activated the community edition of NADN. So I can jump out of settings and start creating my first workflow. So I could start from scratch, try a pre-built agent, or I could select create workflow and start building my workflows. Last month, after some heavy rain, my internet went down for six hours waiting for a technician to come fix it. All of my NADN workflows just stopped, including this exact Ko-Fi integration I had been testing. While I was dealing with the outage, three people bought vaults on Ko-Fi and weren't added to my testing site. No accounts were created. I had to manually fix everything. That's when I realized I can't run critical integration on a home lab infrastructure. So this prompted me to start researching VPS solutions. I compared Linode, Volta, DigitalOcean and Hostinger. All plans offered roughly the same cost versus performance but one stood out to me the most and that was Hostinger. For a two-year commitment of $5 per month, I could get one CPU with four gigabytes of RAM on a 50 gigabyte NVMe drive. For an extra $2, I could double my RAM to eight gigabytes. So to put that in context, Linode, Volta, and DigitalOcean could only offer one CPU and one gigabyte of RAM for $5 a month. Most of the next tiers were over $10. So I decided two years at $7 a month was going to to be perfect for my needs. But not only that is it's really easy to get up and running with Hostinger. So let me show you how it works. So to get started, we're going to head over to hostinger.com forward slash self tac hosted tac n8n. 
You'll notice already that we can unlock unlimited workflows, access community nodes, and we also get a 30 day money back guarantee. So I'm going to select choose your plan. Now most people will be okay on the KVM one plan for $5 a month. It includes one virtual CPU core and four gigabytes of RAM with a 50 gigabyte NVMe disk drive. So this would be four times faster than an SSD. For my use case, because I'm gonna be running multiple workflows over time, I'm gonna go with the KVM2 plan. And this one includes two virtual CPU cores, eight gigabytes of RAM and a hundred gigabytes of NVMe disk space. Before we choose the plan, we'll have a look down the bottom here where it says every plan has everything you need and more. So the main point here is the one click NADN installation. And we also get access to NADN with 100 pre-made workflows. Hostinger have an API community node, which we also get included, and a free .cloud domain for one year. So we don't need to purchase a domain like we would with our local hosting. So this is gonna be ideal for me because I just wanna get up and running as quickly as possible. So I'm going to say choose plan. So I need to choose my period. So it's going to be 24 months. I'm going to ignore daily backups because what I tend to do is when a workflow is completed, I'll save it to GitHub in a private repo, which acts as my backup. So I don't necessarily need to back up this instance. My server location is going to be near my audience. So I'm going to choose Boston as the majority of my audience are in the US or Europe. Then you'll notice it's got an option to select an operating system. So we're not going to choose Ubuntu. We're actually going to choose N8N here. And then we're going to head up and hit continue. So we'll be presented with the billing page. So I'll enter my billing information, hit continue. You'll notice we've got our 30 day money back guarantee. It does add taxes on top. So just be mindful of that. And then you can either pay with credit card, PayPal, Google Pay, Alipay or CoinGate. So I'm going to go ahead and pay by card. Hosting or do a quick ID check just to make sure I'm not abusing the payment process. So once you've paid for your plan, Hostinger will go start building your VPS. This process takes about five minutes and you can leave this page. The next step is to complete the VPS onboarding setup. So we need to select where we want to deploy our VPS. I'm gonna choose Boston as that's closest to my audience. And I'll go click next. And it's going to ask me what operating system I would like. I don't need to install Ubuntu. I just do a search for N8N. And then I'll select N8N under developer tools. And that is built on top of Ubuntu 2404. So I just select this one. Then I need to create a root password. I can also optionally create a SSH key. But for now, I'll just do the root password and then we'll click next. And the malware scanner is included for free. And I'm going to ignore daily backups because I'll be able to do snapshots. So we'll go ahead and select next. So after a few minutes, you'll see that your VPS is running on your hosting a dashboard. You will notice I've got two running here. So we've got one that I set up on the 16th of September. And then the second one down here is the one that I've just set up for this video. So this one is a KVM2 as well. So if we click on manage, then we can see that it's running on Ubuntu 24.04. We've got our SSH account here that we can use and we can set our root password. We can reboot the VPS. There's some guides at the top here on how to update N8N, changing the domain name and resetting the user password. We scroll down, we can see the VPS details. So we've got United States Boston on Ubuntu 24.04. We've got our host name here. So what we'll do from here is we'll just highlight our host name and hit copy. And then in the browser, we're gonna put n8n dot then the name of our host name. And that's gonna present us with a familiar startup screen for n8n. So same as the local version, we'll go set up our account. We get the onboarding questions again. I'm just gonna hit get started. And then we need to license key again. So we'll send a free license key. And then we'll go down to the bottom right and click on usage and plan. 
then we'll select enter activation key, paste in our activation key and select activate. And that will activate our cloud VPS of N8N. So from here, what I would do is I would start importing my workflows. So I'd first create a workflow. Then I come up to the top, select import from file, and then I'd import my first workflow, which is my Ko-Fi integration with WordPress. And then I can start setting up all my credentials for this workflow. Once I'm happy, I hit save. And then now that becomes my new production 24 seven workflow. If I jump back into my hosting a dashboard, over on the left hand side, you will see I've got Docker Manager. So if I expand the Docker Manager, you can see that I've got NADN and traffic running. So that's included when it set up NADN for me. So under the settings, I can change my root password. I can look at my IP addresses and my SSH keys. There's a panel for the operating system under OS and panel. If I didn't want to use NADN anymore, then I can just go change my operating system here and that will rebuild the whole instance. Now, before I mentioned that I didn't want to pay for backups, but under backup and monitoring, you, you can actually use snapshots for free. So you just create a snapshot here. And then if you need to roll back at any time, then at least you can use that snapshot. So that might be useful if you're doing an upgrade or making lots of changes, or you just want to take a backup from time to time. We don't have any server usage data yet, but we can view that in here over time and we can see the latest actions. And then we've got a tab for security. We can create our API token inside of here. And we also have a DNS manager. And then if you go purchase any websites or domains, then you can manage those inside here as well. So it's pretty user friendly. I'm pretty happy with it so far. So now I have Proxmox Docker for NADN learning and testing, a hosting of VPS for production that never sleeps. And when I'm ready to migrate a workflow to production, all I need to do is download and upload the JSON file. So I jump into my local NADN workflows and I just simply select the workflow I wanted to migrate. So if I wanted to do my Obsidian Reddit AI analysis scrape, and all I do is click this one, come up to the three dots, download. That would go download the JSON file. Then I'd head over to my new production, hosting a VPS and add an instance, create a new workflow, come up to the three dots, import from file, select the workflow, rename it, and fix up any credentials that aren't yet linked. And now I'm ready to go for production. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.